friend just sent me this book by R.G. Latorno, who's kind of one of my, I guess, heroes in the faith a little bit. Uh, you, heroes in giving, right? Yeah. Generosity. If you don't know about him, he um, was uh, a businessman. Businessman who used um, earth moving equipment, like was built like bulldozers the biggest and... bulldozers, like known to man, basically, uh-huh. and just kept on building bigger and bigger ones. And anyway, had a really thriving business. Mm-hmm. And uh, he gave away 90% of his income for a long, long time. And um, yeah, he's written a couple books. This one's called God Runs My Business. And I've heard about it. And it's this super old copy that someone just sent me that is probably, I don't know, 70, mm. 80 years old. Yeah. I can't even tell. Maybe an original? Uh, I'm not sure. It's the early pages don't have the date. So, but anyway. Um, super fun. It's a nice gift. Yeah, it is a nice gift. And um, anyway. I love so, that somebody saw it and thought of you. And yeah. Thought to buy it and then mail it to you. I know. That's that was a pretty blessing. sweet. Yeah. So it go it's fitting with what we're talking about today. C. S. Lewis's one rule about giving. Mm-hmm. And I, I was doing some research because we created um if you haven't um if you have the U version app, the Bible app, uh, we've created a whole bunch of Bible plans on there. Mm-hmm. A lot. So I recommend checking those out. You can just go in the Bible plan, search for seed time or Bob Lotic, either one. And you should be able to find a lot of them. But we created one recently Bob-lotic. about Bob Lottick. Say it real fast, Bob Lottick. It does sound like one single word. <clears throat> so we recently found out people never say our name right, which is fine. Like, we don't expect them to. But this is a tangent. We're going to go on a tangent. This is a wild tangent. But so we say Lottick, oh. like L O T I C K, right? And we, it's a German, it's like a yeah, German name, German right? origin, yeah. And so we talked to some German people, and they were like, I don't think you actually pronounce it Lottick. <laughs> we were like, tell us how to pronounce our name. Pretty much everyone else is right. The way they think it should be pronounced is how it should actually be pronounced. Well, there's like 15 different pronunciations, but anyway. <laughs> so if you want to know how to pronounce so our really, way. really, however you pronounce our name, we don't know. And that's you what I tell might people. might be right. Like, because every time I go on a podcast, I'm like, ooh, how do I pronounce your name? I want to make sure I get it right. I'm like, <laughs> I don't care. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I respond to anything. It's all good. But um, if you want to yell in a crowd and get our attention, you can yell Lodic. Right. There you go. Lodic. Um, if you yell Lotish <laughs> really loud, I'm probably not going to turn my head. I think you, you know. would, actually. I might. But <laughs> anyway, all right. Coming back to C.S. Lewis is mm. one rule of giving. So the reason this came up is because I was doing some research for a plan, a version plan they recently created on this topic. Uh, and and I found some instances where C.S. Lewis was talking about money, which he's another hero who, um, right. you know, I've just always been so impacted by his work. Mm-hmm. That I'm like, I want to see what he has to say about money. Like, yeah. what are his thoughts? And this is this was really fascinating to me. And I think this is, um, I don't know what the word is, but uh, comforting in some ways because basically, C.S. Lewis goes on to explain. I mean, it, it in some ways it feels like if we were talking to the Apostle Paul, you know, <laughs> about money. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, because he's just such a hero, and just feel like. <clears throat> So he was solid. doing so many things yeah. right, you know. Right. No one's perfect, you know. But I just feel like he's just a good, you know, God's general, like in right. the faith mm-hmm. type of guy. But anyway, he, <clears throat> what he said about money, uh, and we'll get to his rule in a minute. His rule, but I want to talk about a couple other quotes I found. Mm-hmm. And one of these, that what he said, like just really got you. Well, I, it, it comforted me because it's like. I look up to you so much. And basically he said, I really struggle with money. Well, yeah, let's read this And he was honest. Yeah, so I'll just read it to you. Um, And so this was from uh, a letter that he wrote to a friend. And he said, I'm a panicky person about money myself, which is a most shameful confession in a thing dead against our Lord's words. Mm. And poverty frightens me more than anything else except large spiders and the tops of cliffs. (laughs) Uh, one is sometimes even tempted to say that God wanted us to live like the lilies, lilies of the field. He might have even given us an organism more like theirs. Uh, but of course, he's right. But when you meet anyone who does live like the lilies, one sees that he is. Yeah. So particularly the first half of that, um, just his admission that he's a panicky mm-hmm. person about money uh, and that poverty frightens him more than anything else. Like... I can relate to that. Yeah. And I think most of us listening, uh, I haven't met 
the only people who I've met who feel like I got all this money stuff figured out. I don't have any greed in my heart. I don't have any like. Well, it's really mm. rare when you meet someone who doesn't struggle in any way or any capacity with something financial related. Yeah, and even, I, I mean, I feel like our financial life does this. Like we're- Just up and down? Yeah, just uh, owning our own business. It's like we're not always at the top of a mountain yeah. bringing in, you know, yeah. our, the, the top income that we would love to see. And every time we go back down, I go, oh, man, there's more stuff there that the Lord needs to work yeah, out yeah. every single time. And I I mean, and then I walk out of that going, oh, man, I feel really good about where I am. I feel really solid. You know what I mean? Not like patting myself on the back, but just I feel like I walked through something that was difficult and I leaned on the Lord for it. So then things go up and then we come back down again and the same thing happens. Well, and I yeah. Go, Ooh, Lord, what is that there? And then there's the pride factor to where it's oh, like, you know, yeah. we give a significant amount of our money um, <laughs> and it's easy, like, because the devil wants to get in your ear and be like, Ooh, yeah, you're so good. You're you, so you know, good. And like, you know, you're start that doing that, start doing that stuff. <clears throat> and then it's so easy, like, even without a, a realizing that it's starting to creep into your mm -hmm. behavior and stuff like that. And so it's just a really, money is just such a revealer of your yeah, heart. Like it really it's is. just, it's just and one of those don't tricky arrive. things. arrive. Yeah, like, that's, my, that's my point, yeah. I guess, or where I was headed and all that, is that there is no arrival point. So even RG Latorno, who we're talking about, I guarantee if I was to have an honest conversation with him, that- uh, It wasn't all. Yeah, and smooth sailing. Well, and I, I can't guarantee this, but I suspect that he would say, even at giving ninety percent, that he still had to wrestle with certain things, and he mm -hmm. didn't have all of the money stuff figured out. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, and at the same time, like so many of us, like almost all of us, maybe even all of us, I don't know, are struggling in some capacity with that and having a healthy relationship with money, fully trusting in God, mm -hmm. not depending on money, not depending, not you know, c catering and craving to mammon. Um, and yet, yeah, it's just so easy to lose sight of it, you know? Yeah. And I mean, I, I really I really like that God does that to us, that he puts us in the position of needing him, continuing to need him, because yeah. that is what we want. That yeah. is my true desire, is to not be dependent on finances, but to be dependent on him. It is my true desire for my heart to be pure. And... I, I can try and I can work for that to happen as much as I can, but I can't do it all myself. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I just can't. It's yeah. not and made is, for me to do it myself. This is the essentially the true financial freedom that we're after. You right. know, like we talk about, like, the world says financial freedom is having a million dollars in the bank or mm -hmm. living the four-hour work week or having a yacht. Like, <clears throat> and that's not what authentic, true financial freedom is mm -hmm. for the believer. Like, for us, it's a different thing. Because we don't serve mammon. We don't depend on money as a security. Yeah. We don't look to that for our status. Mm -hmm. um, and so freedom, true financial freedom, is being independent of all of that. Mm -hmm. And to be in a position where regardless of whether I have a ton of money or no money in my bank account, that I trust God fully yeah. to be my provider. Yeah. Um, and that is freedom. You know, yeah. And this is what Paul was talking about in Philippians 4 where he said, I learned the secret of being content in the high times and the low times. Mm -hmm. That contentment to be able to roll with whatever. And it's like, God, I'm following you. I got, I trust that you got me and mm -hmm. you're gonna get me where I need to go. Yep. Like that is freedom. And that's the thing I'm after. And we've, you know, I feel like we've scratched the surface of it and have so much further to go. Right. But that's the thing that I wanna spend my life chasing because as you do that, you're, you're not like, um, you know, this uh, this boat tossed, you know, by the waves right. and the storm. It's like you are a solid thing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like it's just more substantial and you're not beat around, you know, by all those things and the circumstances. This might be a tangent, but you just mentioned the boat. And I was talking to the kids yesterday about we were watching Veggie Tales about Noah's Ark or something. <laughs> veggie Tales. And, Good old um, Veggie Tales. And... They were like they're in the in the Veggie Tales. There was like a huge wave coming at them, and I stopped and I thought, I, I don't know if that happened or not. I was not there for the, the <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was thinking about how they managed the boat 
when the water was, I mean, covering the entire earth. So that's yeah. basically like being in the middle of the ocean yeah. during a storm, right? Yeah. A lot of rain. So thinking about that and how the water moves when there's nothing to obstruct it. Um, and if there's this big wave coming at them, I told the kids, I said, you know what's interesting about this is that God was the one that told them what type of boat to make. Yeah. Because he was the only one that would knew no that would know what type of boat they needed in order to not sink. Yeah. There's lots of different types of boats. There's a sailboat. There's a speedboat. There's. Um, I don't think they're even building a speedboat. Then, but, <laughs> but yes, the, I know. But the, if he gave them the specific idea. instructions, yeah. But he said, make it this long, make it this yeah. wide, make it this high, do this on the inside. I mean, he told them exactly what to do, and I just think that that's interesting. That the only way they survived that was by listening to the Lord. Mm-hmm. They could not have made it through that yeah. without doing exactly what he told them to do. That's good. And yeah, I mean, this this ties into to our finances in that we are going to weather storms. We're going to have to do it. We have to. Like yeah. that, he told us in the Bible, that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And I think if we can listen to his instruction and listen to how he thinks about things, you know, mm-hmm. and drill that into our mind, drill that into our memory, that as these storms come, we're going to be saved. We know we're going to be saved. Yeah. He's given us the promise that he would save us. He's given us the promise that even when we die, because everyone dies, we are going to heaven. So when the bad things happen, when the hard things come, we can stand firm with him on his word. And I think when we're doing what he has instructed us to do through his word, or if he's giving us something specific, we're going to be saved in it. Yep. And we can rest in that. Because... Yeah. Those are the only things that actually can save us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. Is that a good analogy? So, yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, so there's another quote here that I, I uncovered that I thought was really powerful because just I found it to be very, very true. So mm-hmm. um, we've had some seasons. I'll start by saying we've had some seasons where, um, yeah, like you said, our income's been up and down and um, as yeah. a business owner of whatever now, 15, 16 years, Mm -hmm. it's like there's ebbs and flows. And we've had some seasons where it's like, wow, we have way more money coming in than we (laughs) thought we would ever have. Yeah. And then plenty of tight times as well. But this quote here, he says, Plenty of of times when we were like, wow, we have way less money than we ever (laughs) thought we would have. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, Um, really, yeah, being honest. So the quote is this. He says, one of the dangers of having a lot of money is that you may be quite satisfied with the kinds of happiness money can give and so fail to realize your need for God. Mm-hmm. If everything seems to come simply by signing checks, you may forget that you are um, at every moment totally dependent yep. on God. And that is so true. Very true. That is so true. And we went into that one particular season um, where we just had a really good year. Uh, we went into that with, I felt like I was braced. Like where it's like, all right, using a boat analogy. Like I know we're gonna hit some big waves, but I got my hands on the sides and my legs are spread apart. Like I'm, I'm <laughs> raced for this. Like and I and I was going into that, planning on, all right, I am not gonna let this money affect how I think. I'm not gonna let it affect my relationship with God. I'm not gonna let blah 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 mm-hmm. all this stuff. Um, and even with that bracing, like what he said is completely true. Like where. I found myself not depending on God as much because there was a lot of money in the bank account. Isn't that just I found myself praying for things less. I found my vision getting smaller because my vision was attached to what was in my bank account. Wow. Um, Wow. That's that's really good right there. That instead of going after, God, what do you have for me? You're going after, well, this is how much money I have, so these are the things I can do. No, absolutely. It's a, it's a different type of putting God in a box. And, so, and that's the irony of it is I've had the same thing, you know, like a lot of people do, where the bank account's so small that your vision is limited. But on the other hand, the bank account can get bigger, and then your vision is still limited mm. in yeah. a different way because now it's limited to what's in there. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, God has no limits. Right. If he gives the vision, he's going to give the provision Gosh. for it, you know? So... Anyway, that was just a quote That's that I, really I took that I really, really enjoyed. Um, 
I, yeah. I think that it is so interesting too, because yeah, this is one of those topics that people do not like to talk about so much. And I think, I think there's this is wrapped up in it is that there's so much going on in our hearts about money. Yeah. And I don't know why, but I feel like if this is one of those things that we can present to the Lord and really just lean on Him with, yeah. of like God, what is going on in my heart? Like He will reveal it to us, and we'll see, and and we'll get purified. You know, but it has to be a constant uh, submission to him because if we're not constantly submitting it, then there's probably some things that we're holding on to yeah. that we don't even realize. Yeah, yeah, because that's the trickiest thing is that it is so elusive. It just sneaks up on you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it's not just when you have a lot of money coming in. It can be both sides of the equation, yeah. you know, because that's the other thing. I think so many people are afraid of having abundance Um because they think, yeah, they, they have a few different verses in the Bible and whatever. Uh, camel going through either needle or, right. you know, some different verses where if you the take that one ruler. single verse, I think you right. can miss the holistic picture of it, mm-hmm. of the Bible. But um, but the point is, I think there's a lot of people just think, well, if I just don't have much and if I just stay broke or poor, then I'm not going to be tempted with the deceitfulness of riches mm-hmm. or whatever. And that's just 100% not true yeah. at all. Like, as I know, plenty of broke people who are um, had more lust for money than some really, really wealthy people I have. Yeah. Um, so it's not about what yeah. you have. Um, it's about your heart. It's yeah. always about your heart. And you mm-hmm. see this all throughout the New Testament. Whenever you see money, like, you almost always see heart. Money, heart, money, heart, money, heart. Like, mm. it's, these two are intricately connected. Mm-hmm. And so that's why it's so important for us to do this stuff right. Because it's not just about the money. It's yeah. about our heart. Yeah. You know, so anyway, all right. So it's taken a while, but I want to get to this one rule that he has for giving, like kind of, um, and these were the three main things I could find um, where he kind of gets some commentary on money. But this last one was, uh, I don't know. I I just thought it was really powerful as well. Mm. So this is his rule. All right. He says, I am afraid the only safe rule is to give more than we can spare. Mm -hmm. If our giving habits do not at all pinch or hamper us, I should say they are too small. There ought to be things we want to do but cannot do because our giving expenditures exclude them. That's good. That is a good one. It's so challenging, yes, and it's so painful because, yeah, we don't, we want to have the things we want. Well, yeah, and I think it's a big enough step for a lot of people to give from their extra and from Mm, their abundance. mm -hmm. And, oh, I have extra money this month, so I'll give some. Or even, we'll see if there's any extra left over. Yeah, like that, because that right there is a significant step for a lot of people, like in their, you know, walk of generosity. But to get to this point where it's like, I'm intentionally stretching myself to where it consistently hurts. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's just, so I add a level of weight to this because... This came out of C.S. Lewis's mouth. Right. Um, because, again, I feel like this guy tapped into things and is, you know, one of the wiser Christians that I've ever read. Mm. Uh, the depth of his wisdom is it's really, really deep. Yeah. And he isn't just, he doesn't um, flippantly write words. Like, everything right. he writes is well thought through yeah. and wrestled with and whatever. Uh, and so for him to say that, that I've determined that this is the one rule, like that just carries a a lot of weight to me. Yeah. You know, like on on a level where like, you know, we've been doing this, we've been wrestling with some of this money stuff. I'm talking about this for 15 plus years now Mm -hmm. at this point, but but I I can gather the end of my life. We do this another 30, 40 years, talk about this, (laughs) Mm -hmm. and then take all of that, all of our life experience of talking about this and studying this and everything, and get into a point where we'd say, you know what? I think there's only one rule when yeah. it comes to this, like to do it right, and this is it. And yeah. like that's what and, I take that to be. You know, and I, I don't, I don't at all take this to mean that we have to be, you know, painfully giving. You know, yeah, I don't we, think this we means we know that there's scripture that backs up. We should be able to give joyfully, and we we've, we've had a whole podcast yeah. about that as yeah. well. Um, but yeah, I I do think that there's something here to the idea of. I'm going to say no to myself in this other area so that I can say yes to giving. I'm going to shut down my flesh, shut down, you know, the parts of me that just are greedy 
yeah. and purposefully shut them down and purposefully give towards something that um, God's put on my heart. I mean, I, I think there's something really holy there and, the and truth right, is, and I think it keeps us in a submission posture yeah. instead yeah. of a, oh, yeah, I can I got this all figured out. I can do it all, you yeah, know? Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, and I think the truth in all this is that um, – Everything that we, you know, we talk about in part three of the book about the joy of giving and the adventure of giving, like all of that still is true. Mm. And like all of the blessings of giving are still true, mm -hmm. but like this is the, the first step. You know what's kind of actually exciting about this and kind of the Lord is that, okay, let's just say for the sake of argument that you or you, you listening or us or whoever, we're making billions of dollars a year okay we're we're at the top of the richest people yeah. in the world list okay there's still opportunity there that the lord is giving us because he knows that the eyes of man are never satisfied yeah he knows that we can always be like yeah but like R rockefeller said how much they said how much do you need for it to be enough and yeah. he said just a little bit more it wasn't because <laughs> He actually needed more to live. Yeah. We know that. But why did he want more? Because the eyes of man are never satisfied. But in God knowing that about us, he is also giving us the solution to this, which is give yep. and make it so that you yep. can't always have everything. Yep. He's telling us how to combat that. Yep. And I think if we stay there in that place of being one of the richest people in the world and still go, well... I really wanted to buy my own private island, but I decided to give instead. And you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, we still have an opportunity there that maybe the rest of the world doesn't understand. But I, I mean, I think that that's kind of the Lord to say, I know your eyes will never be satisfied. So can I get you to look to me? Can I get you to give and sacrifice to me just to keep your heart in the right place? Yeah. I mean, I'm reminded you just shared that thing the other day of the... It was an interview with the richest man in Singapore. Uh, oh, yeah. And a young kid, probably early 20s. Mm -hmm. What was he asked? What was the question he asked him? Do you have any advice for young people? Mm, right? Yeah. And the guy said, um, uh, basically, yeah, follow Jesus. <laughs> because I've, I've had it all. You know, I'm the wealthiest person in Singapore, and mm -hmm. it doesn't satisfy but Jesus does, you know. And, yeah, and he I, basically said there was always something missing. And I thought, yeah. well, I just need the, I need the next thing. I need the next thing. I need the next thing. And it never satisfied him. And, and, we, and it, we all know this. Like, right. We've heard this story a hundred times. Like, we all know it, but yet we like, all there's a temptation to be like, it. yeah, blah, blah, blah. I got it. I got it. Yeah. You know, but, but it, it's just it's so true. true. It's just so mm -hmm. true. And, um, and anyway, and so I'm just fascinated about... Uh, yeah, I don't know, the simplicity of C.S. Lewis's kind of take on money in general and mm -hmm. handling it and what him boiling it down to right. his most essential thing and that it came back to this, like mm -hmm. lean into giving. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and again, like, you know, and some of the stuff we talk about in part three of the book, but just this idea that as we do, we're storing up treasures in heaven, mm -hmm. Okay. Which is awesome. Like, it, it's great. I don't fully understand it. I don't think any of us are going to fully understand until we get to heaven what that means. But I have no doubt we're going to be very, very thankful when we look back on all of our time at earth for every dollar that we gave. Mm -hmm. I have absolutely no doubt that we are going to be really, really thankful for every dollar dime that we gave. Mm -hmm. um, so that's in mind. And then on top of that, like, Jesus is you know, promise that it's more blessed to give than to receive. Mm -hmm. And as we've, you know, grown in our generosity and just continued to stretch, like we've just seen so many amazing blessings mm -hmm. that have come as uh, a result of it. Yeah. And so it really is a better way to live. And so um, like so many things in our walk with God, it requires a little bit of a step of faith to do this thing that's hard or uncomfortable or yeah, whatever. But, for sure. but God's in it. God's in it. Right? And it's worth it. Because yeah, we we are storing up treasures for ourselves in heaven. Yeah, like that. That's where we're going yeah. with this. And yeah. I, you know, and uh, there's multiple scriptures that kind of touch on this. And there's multiple ways that we're storing up treasures in heaven. But one of them is through our giving, mm. and which is just exciting to me. But 
So anyway, if you want to see all these quotes, you can check out the YouVersion plan, um, Bible plan over there uh, and just download it. C.S. Lewis is one rule about giving, I think, is a title mm. over there. And uh, you can check that out. And um, what else? Anything else? I think that's it. Oliver, you want to say hi? Uh, I just wanted to see you guys see my room. Uh, we'll <laughs> see your room in just a minute, okay? So, Oliver, can you say bye? Bye. All right. See y'all. Thanks for joining us on the Seed Time Money Podcast. And remember, money isn't the goal, but it's simply a tool to help you fulfill your purpose and your calling. And we'd love to help you achieve true financial freedom faster with our email newsletter. So if you want exclusive money tips and hope-filled encouragement in your inbox, head over to seedtime.com to get signed up.